What would you do if you had $14 billion sitting in your bank account? Take a trip to Dubai for vacation or add the latest Bugatti to your fleet of cars. Here's something wild. That's only a regular day in the life of Dubai's wealthiest man and his family. If it's luxurious, if it's flashy and classy, Dubai's royal family has it all and more. In this video, we will bring the full tea on what it's like to be the king of Dubai and how the royal family spends their fortune in the famous city of gold. Before we begin, hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting content from High Luxury. Dubai, a former fishing village, has developed into a paradise where the wealthy and famous dine and wine in the finest hotels, yachts and islands. From the richest boxer in the world, Floyd Mayweather, to America's most famous sisters, the Kardashian girls, these celebrities have had a taste of the Dubai glamour. But no one does it better than the elites in Dubai. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is the ruler of Dubai, founder and owner of Emirates Airlines, the largest airline in the Middle East. He owns a significant stake in the world's largest port operator, DP World, and is an investor in several other companies across various sectors, including real estate, hotels, and technology. Mohammed comes from a long line of Dubai rulers. His lineage, the Al Maktoum family, is Dubai's ruling family and descendants of the House of Al Falasi. He is the third of four sons of Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum and took over the rulership of the Dubai Kingdom after his brother's death in 2006. Presently, Sheikh is the Vice President, Prime Minister, and Minister of Defense of the United Arab Emirates. The Al Maktoum ruling family is strong and wealthy, and most of their fortune came from the sale of oil in the 1970s. They are descendants of the Bani Yas tribe, of what is now the United Arab Emirates, who were the most powerful and strategic of the familial clans of ancient Arabia. Around 800 members of the Al Maktoum family broke away from the main Baniyas family in 1833. They took over the emirate or province of Dubai, establishing themselves as the reigning dynasty of this area. According to the laws of Dubai, the ruling family owns all undeveloped land in Dubai, allowing the family to prosper from real estate development. But Sheikh was not born with a silver or gold spoon. Matter of fact, his early years were not very luxurious. While growing up, he was forced to occasionally sleep with hundreds of other family members and slaves in a chamber without a fan. They didn't even have electricity in their home. As you'd know, before oil was discovered in Dubai, the city depended on fishing and the pearl industry, so luxury wasn't a thing they were familiar with, not even royalty. Sheikh Mohammed began his formal education in 1995 at Al Almedia School. At age 10, he moved to Al Shab School, and two years later, he went to Dubai Secondary School. In later years, he studied at the Mons Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, now part of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, passing out with the Sword of Honor as the top Commonwealth student. When he returned from military training in the UK, his father appointed him as the head of the Dubai Defense Force. He was only 20. By 22, he was appointed the Minister of Defense after the formation of the new nation of the United Arab Emirates. Mohammed rules Dubai as an autocrat. Institutions of democracy do not exist, and there are many controversies around them. Human rights organizations claim systematic human rights abuses, such as government dissidents' forced disappearance and torture, are common. There was even an incident with his wife and daughters. Sheikha Latifa tried to escape from home at some point. She recorded a video in which she said she was running from her family, accused them of abuse and claimed her father was involved in several homicides, including killing his deceased elder brother's wife. In June 2019, it was revealed that Princess Haya bint Hussein, one of Sheikh Mohammed's wives, had left Dubai and was now seeking political asylum in Germany with her two children. 
A UK family court concluded in December 2019 that Sheikh had, on the basis of a preponderance of the evidence, planned the kidnappings of his daughters Latifa and Shamsa and had continued to uphold a system in which both were denied their freedom. The court also concluded that Mohammed had taunted Princess Haya, the mother of his kids, following her adulterous liaison with a bodyguard by intimidating her. Away from the controversies, Sheikh is a true businessman. He has overseen the development of several companies and economic assets for Dubai, with a number held by two companies under his ownership, Dubai World and Dubai Holding. He founded the Emirates Airline, which currently has a shirt sponsorship deal with Arsenal worth £200 million and a four-year shirt sponsorship with Real Madrid FC worth £70 million per year, while serving under Dubai Civil Aviation. He also inaugurated the first Dubai Air Show, which recorded a thousand companies exhibiting. Sheikh Mohammed also inaugurated the famous Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest skyscraper and most luxurious hotel, and founded the Jumeirah Beach Hotel, a luxury hotel located on an island of reclaimed land offshore of the beach of the former Chicago Beach Hotel. The Jumeirah Beach Hotel contains 598 rooms and suites, 19 beachfront villas, and 20 restaurants and bars. This wave-shaped hotel complements the sail-shaped Burj Al Arab, which is adjacent to the Jumeirah Beach Hotel. Single-handedly, the Maktoum family grew Dubai from a fishing village to a global city everyone wants to visit during winter. Sheikh Mohammed is also a big name in international thoroughbred horse racing and breeding with ranches throughout the United States, Australia, Ireland, and England. Mohammed had raced horses as a boy. He watched Royal Palace win the 2,000 guineas at Newmarket in 1967 when he went to his first official race. Ten years later, he won his first race with Hatta at Brighton and became an independent owner. In 2008, he bought the Woodland Stud from its Australian owner for about $460 million. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So, let's see what Mohammed does when he's not busy making money for his kingdom. Sheikh Mohammed has a history of lavish spending, from vacations to weddings. His wedding to Sheikha Hind bint Maktoum bin Juma al Maktoum, the mother of 12 of his 30 children, was Dubai's first significant public event. The extravagant five day wedding ceremony featured 127 camel races and aerobatic shows. A 20,000-seat stadium was constructed strictly for this wedding. The total cost of the ceremony is estimated at $100 million. If that makes you feel poor, wait till you hear how much the king gives his kids. Children of Princess Haya get as much as $12 million annually. Tell me you're rich without telling me you're rich. The Dubai ruler does that effortlessly with his fleet of cars, some of which are custom-made. Mohammed owns more than a hundred luxury and vintage vehicles, including Mercedes-Benz, Rolls-Royce, and Bugatti models. He has been seen many times traveling in his Mercedes-AMG G63. The latest model of this vehicle costs about $180,050, and the king owns 20 of those, amounting to $3,601,000. Another top-tier car in his collection is the Bugatti Veyron Pegaso Edition, which costs around $1.2 million. That's a whole year's rent on a car. Did you know Sheikh Mohammed was the first to get a custom-made Mercedes-Benz G55 AMG, which cost around $131,750? He owns not one, but three such cars. The fleet wouldn't be complete without the Midas Touch. Mohammed owns a Rolls-Royce Phantom drophead coupe, a two-seater coupe spanning over six meters. The vehicle was gold-plated with 24-karat gold, priced at $12.8 million, and made especially for the king. When he's on water, he cruises with his 531 feet long vessel that costs $400 million. The mega yacht comprises seven decks and 50 lavish bedrooms and can accommodate around 24 people with 80 employees. Sheikh Mohammed has more houses than we can count and maybe more than they need. 
According to a study from The Guardian, the Dubai ruler has amassed lands and properties in Britain that may surpass 100,000 acres, worth more than $119 million, making him one of the country's wealthiest landowners. He also has properties in Rome through a company registered in Luxembourg. The exact number of the properties is unknown, as most of the properties connected to him are owned through offshore companies in the tax havens of Guernsey and Jersey. Buying large homes is a rich people thing, and Dubai's super rich spend a lot of money on their homes. The billionaires and millionaires in Dubai take fine living to a new level, with custom luxury fixtures and decor created by famous designers from across the globe. These folks are happy to spend up to $14 million for beautiful residences equipped with groomed gardens, a private beach spot, and access to golf clubs in the Emirates Hills and Pont Jumeirah, which are famed for their ultra-luxurious homes. Sheikh Mohammed is now 72, so you can't expect him to be everywhere flaunting wealth, but his son, Dubai's crowned prince Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, is living the life most of us would want. The prince, known as Faza on Instagram, splurged $2.7 million on the most expensive camel in the world. His Instagram is full of pictures of himself in different countries, jet skiing or skydiving. Honestly, I'd be living his life if my father had that kind of money. A day in the crown prince's life is him taking care of animals or competing in horse races. Like his father, Faza attended the Royal Military Academy, the same school Prince Harry and Prince William studied at. Maybe that is where the Dubai royal family learned their humility, because as wealthy as they are, they're down to earth. Occasionally, the royal family goes into the communities to relate with its subjects. The crowned prince is known for living a simple life, portraying himself as a selfless leader that cares about his people. He once paid the hospital bills for a Dubai citizen in need. Sheikh Mohammed spends liberally on himself and his family members, but he also believes giving back to society through charitable donations is important. Sheikh Mohammed has funded infrastructure projects throughout the Middle East that provide water, electricity, and other services. During COVID-19, Sheikh Hamdan presented a stimulus package worth more than $400 million. With such an astounding amount of money in the region and a huge opportunity to increase that wealth, this family is certainly making things interesting. We wish them the best of luck in their endeavors to make Dubai the most prosperous city in the world.